I would also like to welcome you to service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I say welcome. Shall we pray? Our Lord and our Father, we continue to seek your throne of mercy in Jesus' name. Father, even as uh, I stand before your congregation, I ask from you, Jehovah God, so that you may use me according to your plan and according to your will. I commit the congregation into your hands as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, asking that you speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. First and foremost, I would like to thank the Reverend and the Executive for granting me this rare privilege and opportunity to stand before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Today we are going to take time to look at a theme that is saying caring, caring creation. Caring for the caring creation. But before we dwell so much into that, I'll just to remind all of us that this year as the United Church of Zambia, indeed we have continued to acknowledge what God has done to us, what God is doing to us amid these many challenges and many afflictions that we, we go through. 2020, 2020 came with different challenges among us to each pandemic. Different individuals have gone through different challenges. They have gone through bereavements. We have got uh, an economy that is biting. And yet, we are still saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. Thus far the Lord has helped us Thus far, the Lord has helped us as a congregation. Amen. The one in the book, reading from and fifteen, we read a portion of scripture where we heard that on the seventh day, after God had finished his work, after God had completed what he had planned to, to make, what he had planned to, to offer for the earth, took time to rest. Now, I know from an individual point of view or from the human perspective, we do consider resting as when we are tired. We do consider resting as when we want to catch a breath so that we may come and continue doing our work or doing whichever task that we might be intending to do. But in this aspect, I want to point out to us that God rested because he had completed what he intended to do and his work was good. Not only was it good, but his work was perfect. It was perfect in that God had created everything that all the animals, even the human being should benefit from and live life in full. Mashi yoto chwerenga mbuki ya Genesis tuwa mfoko wat after padea number 7 lesa ayu kwa toktusha notu kutusha nga mwishila intu tutusha mo ifwe ili ingirine ya kwe wat tuwa naka trefua wako kwa wat tutusha kwa tuke septirisho kubomba na kaviri ishita imi batu kutusha kwa kaena kuntulesa tushe mula ndu wako wat Imirimo intuwa pekenyo kubomba Yali ipua Kairi yali wama Kairi na fiyonse fi arefwa yiko kubapu pachalo Lesa aliva uakupuisha ukupanga Amen Kavidi neto tuachi vere ngamuli Second Peter Tuwa mfuwa mashiwi Eo Peter ale leta kuvena kristu wa varikana rikana Ukuleta kuvena kristu Ukuwa chita inkareju kwe watu wafuri wa pita Number one, mukukula wina Christu wabo. Icha number two, ukwebati, they should be on guard and watch 
against the false doctrines that were uprising, the false prophets that were uprising in that time. And also to heed and take note that we have been given a special nature. We have been given special ability. We have been given divine ability to live life in full and to live a life that is godly. Because everything that we need to live a satisfactory life, to live a blessed life, God created and his creation was complete and his creation was perfect. Amen. This morning congregation, I would want us to focus on three points and we will be done. Our first point that we are looking at is saying, we shall not live a life that is empty. We shall not live a life that is empty. Brethren, we shall not live a life that is empty, but we shall live a life that is complete. I would like us to turn our attention to, the, to Genesis again, but this time we can consider Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 2, we see that the earth was void. The earth was without form and darkness was on the surface of the earth. So this is one extreme that I want us to consider. But yet, on the seventh day when God finishes create, creating anything, we find that the picture changes. Creation is complete. Everything is good and perfect. There is no more void. There is no more an earth without form. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Tuarasango kwaat ichalo chari chavula nang fimo. Ichalo chari icha kwete na life. Pachalo pali mfimfi. But inga tuwa isalo le shamli Genesis chapter 2. Omo tuwa chivere ngo kwa mbila pa 1 to 8. Tuesa umono kwaat lesa alenge fin tu fiance. Ichalo cha wama. Kairine fin tu fiance ifikankale fuyo kuvamo fiavamo. Now to us today, the question we might want to ask is that what kind of emptiness do we have in our lives? Are our lives filled with portions of void? Do we experience portions of darkness? Because this is not supposed to be the case. The Bible is telling us that God completed his creation. He endowed into this earth all resources that we need to live a life that is fulfilled, to live a life that is full of happiness and blessing. And this is what has been echoed again in the book of Second Peter. So even as we consider caring for the creation of God, we ought to know that creation was complete in the first place. Creation was complete and God blessed us with everything that he made. Therefore, there should be no room for you and me to live a life where we have got portions that present something formless in our lives. Where we are lacking. Where we, fe we are feeling incomplete. Because the place was complete. Hallelujah. But how do we achieve or attain this level of completeness? For us to attain this level of, com of completeness, we also have to note that we need to have a sound and profound relationship with God. Because without that, then we will continue experiencing points or stages in life where we are empty. Stages in life where we feel that there is a void in our lives which is not supposed to be the case. So even as we care for the caring creation, we should live a life without emptiness. We ought to live a life that is complete. Hallelujah. The second point that I would like us to concentrate on is saying that we should bring forth the unseen substances out of the earth. We should bring forth the unseen substances out of the earth. As stewards or as custodians of this earth, we, we should take note that after God had finished creating everything, the world was perfect and the world was complete. But again, the Bible, 
alerts us to the fact that no plant was growing yet. There was no growth. No vegetation was there. This was because God had not created man yet. Man to do what? Man to tender the earth. Man to take care of the earth. It was only after the creation of man came forth that the vegetation came up and our responsibility started. We need to bring forth the unforeseen substances on this earth. We need to develop our lives so that even the hidden resources that we have, even the hidden blessings that God has bestowed in us can be foreseen. Not until for example why because we are applying ourselves god created everything there are no new things that god creates but it is up to us as stewards to take responsibility as stewards to grow the creation that God had given unto us. Therefore, we, we, we also realize that being stewards or caring for God's creation, that in turn, in turn has to take care of us, is not just looking after it. We have to develop it. We have to grow and develop the resources that they are in so that we may benefit fully. We may live a life that is complete so that we may live a life that is godly. Hallelujah. Being a steward calls for us to bring out the unseen substances on this earth, to develop the earth. This also speaks to us, especially as Christians, to develop good policy, policies that will help us to exist on this earth in a peaceful manner in a more comfortable manner especially us as Christians who have been called to live a life that is godly what contributions are we making towards the shaping of the earth towards the shaping of different policies that are being put or set forth in this world mundo chalo twaikala te kusungiri rafie ifintu makamake fio tumona like mu physical term lero twalikwa tama kaya kwebati nero tule chita contribute ngavena kristu kuma funde ari kana reka na mchalo twapanga ama funde ya kwebati tule ikala imyeo shiawulesa imyeo ishilese keshalesa ne imyeo ishilerengo kwati dia tule ampana abantu aba psana psana muno chalo tule ikala bwino pact twinga chita benefit ifya londoloka ukuringana nefyo lesa ashta create the other question even as we try to develop as stewards the creation that god has given us that we can ask ourselves is that are we where we are supposed to be or are we where we would like to be often we will find that we still have desire to reach greater heights we still have desire to achieve main goals as individuals as a church and of course as families this even emphasizes the point that indeed we need not just to look after God's creation but also to grow it we need to grow God's creation we also need to grow God's creation in terms of healing the earth of different afflictions that the world is faced with the world is faced with afflictions like climate change. How are we as stewards caring for creation so that we may heal the world of climate change? So that we may heal the world of different afflictions? These are responsibilities that we need to consider if we are going to care for the creation that in turn is supposed 
to care for us. Our final point is saying we should live within God's mandate. We are all called to live lives that are complete and lives that are called, that are God according to Peter. When Peter talks about us living a life that is that is complete, it involves us living a life that is holy. It involves us living a life that is godly. In the book of uh, Second Timothy, in the book of Timothy, or the scripture that we had in our call to worship, the Bible admonishes us by saying that physical fitness or physical exercise only helps us accomplish part of our blessings. But godliness takes care of it all. When we are holy, when we are godly, even God is on our side, then we stand a chance to benefit from the care that God's creation is intended for us. Peter tells us we have everything available for us to be great, for us to be complete, for us to be godly. So even as we take care of the creation that is supposed to care for us, we should know that caring for God's creation starts with us. Starts with us in terms of us looking at how we are nurturing our relationship with God. Is our relationship with God moving all right? Are we on track? Are we straying? If we are straying, we need to get back. We need to get back to holiness. We need to get back to godliness. This is what Paul emphasizes when he talks to, to the church in Titus chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. He says, Say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Ungodliness and worldly passions should not lead, should not pull us away from our abilities, should not pull us away from various responsibilities that we have as stewards, that we have as responsible parties that God created. And so, caring for God's creation is indeed a huge responsibility. When we care for creation, creation shall care for us. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor because you are holy and you are mighty. You continue to counsel us in many different ways. Father, we thank you even for the word today. We glorify thy name in Jesus' name. Amen.